Hey guys, I hope you're ready for some satisfying cleaning, decluttering, and homemaking inspiration with several new recipes. Today you're going to be getting lots of real life moments filled with some serious homemaking and cleaning motivation. I know it can be hard and overwhelming to do all the things that you're responsible for, but I know you have it in you to get these things done, and I'm going to be right by your side, keeping you company and encouraging you to get things done with me today. So if you are new here, welcome. I am so happy to have you join this incredible community where we build each other up and share all things homemaking. And if you've already been a part of the family for a while, I see you and I appreciate you being here each week. Now, today's video is one of my marathon style videos that I started sharing several years ago and y'all have loved them ever since. And because they're some of my favorite recent videos compiled into one extra long video, you're able to click play once and get constant motivation and company while you stay busy with your own to-do list and we can just tackle things side by side because everything is better when you have someone to do it with. Now, this video is going to have a little bit of everything. I will be doing lots of everyday cleaning along with some deep cleaning around the house. I'm also continuing to declutter our home because I am kind of on a decluttering journey of sorts at the moment and I'm also sharing some really yummy and super simple recipes. So I hope that this video brings you peace and gives you tons of momentum to do all the things that you need to. You are amazing and you've got this. Now let's do this thing. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing the coziest Christmas clean with me. We are going to be getting a lot done, but we're doing it in a very relaxing way. So I hope this video will give you lots of motivation to tidy your home or do whatever project you're working on. But I hope it also will bring you a lot of peace because this time of year can be a little bit crazy. So we've got to not only get things done, but also do it in a more relaxing way, right? Let's do this. All right, I shared on Instagram a simmer pot recently and a lot of people were confused like what it was exactly. And I also got a lot of comments wondering if you could use this as like a tea. And honestly, I've never actually done that, but I think you probably could. But for me, I just like using a simmer pot to scent our home in a really beautiful way. You can do it seasonally. That's kind of what I like to do. So in this specific one, I am just adding an orange sliced up, some cranberries, rosemary, cinnamon sticks, and cloves and it seriously smells your house up just like Christmas. And I will actually use this for a few days. I just turn it off at night and then I turn it back on in the morning. And I do these often enough that I love using a small crock pot. It's just the perfect way to not forget that you have something cooking on the stove and kind of oil the water out of it. But no matter how you do a simmer pot, you cannot go wrong. They just smell amazing. you guys thanksgiving is over and now i feel like we are in full-blown christmas season and every year i feel stressed at this time of year i love it it's my favorite i love the coziness i love the magic side of it but as a mom and as an adult i feel a lot of pressure during this time of year and it's silly because I feel like we put this pressure on ourselves. Like nobody else is expecting all of these crazy things from us, but we are expecting it of ourselves. And I feel like it steals our joy and it steals the season, our memories, and just all the things. And it turns what could be an incredible time of year into an incredibly stressful time of year. And I really hate that. So sometimes I know for me, I will get an idea in my mind of how I want something to go or how I think it's going to turn out best. And as soon as something doesn't go according to plan, I all of a sudden feel like things are going wrong. I feel like they're, you know, way off track and it makes me stressed and worried. And so for the rest of the year, I'm really going to work towards just kind of 
going with the flow a little bit more and kind of being a little bit more easy on myself and just life in general and the situations that we get put in. And I'm hoping that that can let the magic and the enjoyment of Christmas happen a little bit easier versus kind of forcing it like a lot of times I end up trying to do when I plan everything out. And that is one of the reasons I wanted to share this video because I want to motivate you guys, but I also want to bring that calmness in so we can still get everything done, but we can do it in a lot more peaceful and calm way and just kind of go with the flow on things. So my hope is that this video does just that for you. It motivates you in a very peaceful way. I know we are late in November right now when I'm sharing this video, but I did want to share an official November giveaway. So I am doing what I've done for the last several months, which you guys have loved. I am going to be picking one subscriber to win $100 PayPal cash from me. All you have to do is of course, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and then go ahead and leave a comment on all the videos that I share during November. Some are already up and then some are still coming later on this month. And then I will have all the rest of the details for that down in the description box below. So good luck to everybody. And when I pick a winner, I will go ahead and just reply back to your comment, letting you know that you've won. And then I can go ahead and send your prize over to you. Giving my bedroom a quick little tidy and refresh every morning has been in my morning routine and that has helped me so much. But as you may know, we have family staying with us for the last week or so and I have not kept up with this at all. And honestly, I can totally feel a difference in how my day has gone. So let me know, do you keep up with routines while you have company in town? I either need a lot of tips on how to keep up with things while I have company in town, or I just want the peace of knowing that I'm not alone. So let me know how it goes in your house. All right, now that my bedroom is clean, we are going to clean up my office. <laughs> <laughs> here it is a mess again and our guest room everything in the guest room is actually our christmas bins but i'm finally done decorating for christmas i've just been kind of decorating here and there and so i didn't want to go ahead and like store them yet but now that we're done decorating i'm ready to store them away and then also in my office i got one of those peloton bikes I found it on Facebook Marketplace for a really good deal. So I got that for my birthday actually. So now in that space, I have that and I'm going to end up moving this desk. I think I might actually go ahead and sell that maybe on Facebook Marketplace just because I thought I would use a lot more than I do. And so I think I'll go ahead and just get rid of it. I'll have to kind of pull things out of that and move that out to the garage so I can go ahead and get that listed. But yeah, let's get this chaos taken care of and then we can actually vacuum and wipe things down and clean in here. I've shared in my last several videos that I've just been feeling a lot of overwhelm in my life right now, especially I think it's been coming from our house feeling cluttered and just chaotic. And so I started a decluttering series sometime, maybe it was last month, but so far I've shared three different episodes and I'm actually going to be decluttering our garage on the day that this video goes live. And I've kind of been dreading it because it's a big, huge task. You guys will know when you see that video, what I'm talking about, but I've also been looking forward to it because I know it's going to make a huge difference in how our home feels. So that video will actually be episode four in my declutter your home series. So stay tuned for that. The plan is for that one to go live next week. Dashing through the snow 
In a one horse open sleigh O'er the fields we go Laughing all the way That view right there is exactly why I have my desk facing out into the hallway in my office. That's what I see every time I'm working on a video or whatever I'm kind of doing in my office. And as long as the guest room is looking nice, it's so peaceful. When it's not, it's a little stressful, but I'm working towards always making that room look amazing. And I know it still doesn't have doors on it. That's still a work in progress. Hopefully we will get that done soon. These lamps are so pretty. I love them so much. I've actually been spying on them on the Walmart website for quite a while. I will link them down below if you're interested in them. And the ones that we had in here previously, I had gotten from a thrift store and they just kind of worked, kind of didn't. And so adding these new ones in here, I was just so excited for it. I love the warmth that that antique gold look adds. And also I was pleasantly surprised with how you turn them on. They just turn on by tapping anywhere on the lamp. And I think that's just so convenient. My mom has actually been staying in this guest room and she said she's been loving them too. So I feel like I mostly pull out my cordless vacuum more than anything just because it's so convenient but I do have a corded vacuum. It is, however, getting a little bit tired because I have used it like crazy for the last several years. And so during the Walmart Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale, I saw the best deal on a vacuum that I've kind of been having my eye on. I'm not sure if it's still gonna be on sale, but if it is, I will have it linked down below for you guys. But it's a corded vacuum and I'm so, so excited for it. The reviews on it are incredible. But let me know in the comments, do you typically use a cordless vacuum or do you prefer a corded vacuum? Obviously the cordless vacuums are the most convenient. You just can't beat that. But the corded vacuums have incredible suction and power. And so that's just something you can't beat also. They're just on like two different sides of the spectrum. Promise I'll protect you from the suffering. All right, welcome to day two and welcome to a no makeup day because it is only 11.30 and it's already been a day. It's been such a long day. But last night the boys got home from school and I actually had one of my mom and son date nights that we do once a week. I'll go out with one of the boys and then we just had some family time last night. So I was like, you know what? We'll finish this today. There's always more to do. Today we're going to focus on getting the living room tidied up, cleaning up in the kitchen. So Kyle's not home right now. And something that I've done pretty much forever since Kyle and I got married 
is as soon as he would get home from work or like right before he was getting home from work, I would do my best. I would have like a 30 minute like rush clean and I would go through the house and I would just get everything nice and clean because that's like the best feeling when you walk in the house and the house is clean. It's just very peaceful and relaxing. So since he's not home right now, I'm gonna go ahead and surprise him. I'm gonna clean up his office area because it is a bit trashed in here. Before I start, I'm gonna light up our cactus, our Christmas tree, and also get that summer pot going from yesterday that we started. Hey, Benji. <laughs> you always wanna say hi. But yeah, let's go ahead and get the cozy vibes going and then we'll get cleaning. Usually in these voiceovers, I don't really know exactly what I'm going to say. I just kind of chat about whatever pops in my head as I'm watching the video back. But today it actually felt really neat to watch myself light our tree and turn on the simmer pot and just kind of slowly tidy up Kyle's office for him. One of my friends a few weeks ago was talking about how it's really hard to get perspective or kind of see the full picture of our life or even of our problems because we are too close to it. And I actually really felt that today because I remember on the day I was filming this, I was kind of dealing with some personal struggles and I was just a little bit in my head on that day. And I always plug in our tree and I always do those daily things and it just can feel very monotonous and boring and nothing special. But as I'm watching them back, they feel like very beautiful moments. And all of us have these moments every single day. They're nothing fancy, but they're just the things that we do all the time. And I feel like we often miss them because we just feel rushed or we're not paying attention. And I kind of felt like it was a little bit of a gift to just be able to watch myself do those little things and see it in kind of a different light. So I feel like I'm getting a little rambly, but I hope all of that is making sense. But anyway, this week I am going to take some time and just look for those beautiful moments as I go throughout my days. And I invite you to do the same. So if you take me up on that invitation, let me know in next week's video if that made a difference for you during your week. And some examples of things that I'm talking about of just those mundane things that can actually be a really beautiful moment could be like giving your kids a bath or taking a shower or chopping the vegetables for dinner making the bed in the morning and just kind of looking at those things through a different lens and see how you feel. Because right now, as I'm talking to you, I'm actually feeling a lot of overwhelm of just feeling very grateful for those moments. Let me know in the comments. Do you have any guesses of what Christmas movie I'm watching? This has been one that I've been putting on all the time this year. It's just been like my go-to Christmas movie. And as soon as you know what it is, leave a comment down below and what time in the video was when you figured it out. But also let me know what is your favorite Christmas movie. We have like five or six, I would say, that we watch every single year, sometimes multiple times in a season. But I feel like sometimes we kind of run out of family Christmas movies. So if you have any good suggestions, whether they're classics or something kind of random, let me know what your favorite ones are. let water go to waste in our house we always will 
pour any extra water bottles in plants or maybe in the pet dish or something, or if those have already been watered or are full, I'll even go outside and just water our grass with it just so that I'm not dumping it straight down the drain. Let us adore him. Lift up your voice. Now that we are almost through November, let me know how was your Thanksgiving if you're in the US and also celebrate that. Ours was really good. A lot of times I just am the one that ends up doing all the cooking and stuff, but this year my mom and one of my sisters came into town and we got to cook in the kitchen all day together and it was just so nice to be together this year. But my brother-in-law is actually from Brazil and he was saying on Thanksgiving that they kind of celebrated it back home too not like the meaning of it or anything obviously because they're not from here and they're in brazil but his family just kind of took it as like another reason to gather together and enjoy each other's company and eat good food so i thought that was kind of neat that even though they don't necessarily celebrate the holiday they kind of get to enjoy it too Once I got all the dishes washed, I just went ahead and washed up my soap station. And on my soap station first is just that little tray. I actually made that tray. I shared how to do that in, I think it was my fall clean and decorate with me video. Basically, it's just a tile tray that you get from Home Depot and then just some little sticks of tile as well. And then you just liquid nails those together and voila, you have a simple DIY tile tray. And then on top of that, I just have some Dawn dish spray in a cuter spray bottle than what it comes in, along with some essential oils, a scrub brush. And then I also have the Soap Daddy, which is an awesome soap dispenser. I feel like I have perfected my soap station lately and I'm loving it. When I get home we'll start a fire. Listen to it crackle.
All right, here we go with some more real life moments. I feel like I am always kind of full of them anyway, but especially during the holiday time when life gets a little more out of hand, I have a little extra to share with you guys. And this countertop is no exception. So that was definitely a lot of grease and oil and I don't know, random spills and crumbs and all the things stuck on my countertop. So needless to say, it felt incredible to go ahead and get things wiped down. And I also wanted to take some time to wipe down the backsplash behind our stove just because that always gets a lot of splatter. And sometimes I definitely fall behind on getting that wiped down after every time I use the stove. So it happens very quickly. But I did want to mention this is the Caldron cleaner this is like i think one of their new scents this year for the holidays and i think it's a very pretty scent it's not my top scent you guys know i love sea salt neroli but if you love a lot of floral scents you are going to love this one kyle is the one in our house who really likes the floral scents and he really liked it if you have any favorite cleaning scents right now, let me know which ones are your go-tos. Whether it's one that you go to for all year round or just more seasonal. These are the brand new bloom towels. I finally got my hands on them and they are so stunning. So they basically have two different sets. They have one that's more playful and colorful and fun and kind of more along the whimsical lines. And then on the other side, they have more traditional colors like your red and your green and you know, things like that. So no matter how you style your house, they have something for everybody but you guys know i love my bloom towels so much they are really good size they're very very durable i've been using bloom towels for years and years and years they also have a little hook sewn in so that you can hang them up in your kitchen they are double-sided and they always have a ton of really cute prints and i don't remember if i mentioned this but they are like a tight waffle knit fabric so they're very very absorbent they are my favorite kitchen towels if you want to get your hands on some and you want to save a little money because who doesn't want to save some money my code is active it's just amanda15 and that will save you 15 percent on your entire order not only for christmas towels but also all the other prints that they have available on their website tell me tell me now where you going if you really know then you show it only one chance don't blow it don't you blow it now yeah, I know you don't do it on purpose, but you made me feel worthless. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keeping my cool on the surface. Don't forget I'm still a person. Yeah, yeah. I'm a person. Telling my story to the world, but it seems you want another version. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm trying to be the bigger man. Yeah, I ain't trying to be a bitter man. No, no. But you make it so, so hard when you go so far to make yourself the victim. Ay. Trying to just speak my peace, but after all of that, I feel my words are twisted. Ay. You sounded like a Peter Pan yeah. when you fuss about your meager plans. Yeah. Hope you know I'd rather criticize, but if I do, what's the difference in you and I? When the world is cold and you just can't deny you're high and dry, better learn how to thrive. When the world is cold and you can't deny, we'll make it through the night. Better learn how to thrive. As I'm watching this footage back, I'm feeling a little bit self-conscious of having a no makeup day just because I'm used to, you know, how I look with makeup on. But it is really nice to have those kind of chill days where you don't have your makeup done, you're just not all made up or anything, and you just feel a little bit more relaxed. How can I go on if you're not around? Yeah, how can I go on if you're not around? Yeah, how can I go on if you're not around? Yeah, how can I go on if you're not around? 
here I'm just kind of organizing all of our extra cardboard that we need to get in the recycle bin. And this is so random, but it's kind of like a pet peeve that it costs so much more for a recycling can than it does a regular trash can. I don't know. That just feels very backwards to me, but that is a topic for another day. So next I just have these little paper ornaments kind of laying on the coffee table and I decided to go ahead and hang them up. So I wasn't officially decorating the tree before when we typically do it as a family, but I just wanted to get these few ornaments put on the tree so that they didn't get lost or ripped or anything. And I just think they're so pretty, like the kind of delicate paper look. And I also just think they're really unique. You're high and dry, better learn how to thrive when the world is cold. My Roborock robot vacuum and my Roborock Diet Pro were teaming up on this day to get my floors looking and feeling amazing. I don't always clean my floors with my Roborock Diet. Like I don't do this on a daily basis, just kind of when I have spills or at least once a week I will do this. However, our robot vacuum runs actually twice a day just with a bunch of kids and a bunch of pets and you know, a lot of dust here in Arizona. It definitely has its work cut out for it, but there is just a different feeling when you have your house cleaned and your floors are mopped. It feels so clean, it looks so good. And even though, you know, it doesn't last, like it definitely gets dirty fairly quickly again, it's just so worth it to spend a little time and do this. And I love my dyad because I don't have to actually go through and vacuum everything first and then go back and mop. It cuts the work in half because I'm able to vacuum and mop at the same time. Now, I don't know exactly if this is on sale right now, but I will find the best price and I'll link it down below for you guys. But if you're able to get a Dyad Pro for Christmas or put it on your list or something, or even if you get a gift card and put that towards it, this tool just makes cleaning your floors so, so much easier. It saves me so much time. That is going to be everything for today's video. We got a lot done and I feel like it was very relaxing. So I hope you felt the same way. Don't forget to stay tuned because next Monday I'm going to be declaring my garage like I mentioned earlier and you do not want to miss that video. It's going to be a real one. Thank you again so much for hanging out with me today. And just a reminder, make sure you're subscribed and get yourself entered into that giveaway. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Welcome to episode four in my whole house decluttering series. We have so far done my kitchen, my office, Kyle's office, our guest room, my closet. 
We've decluttered a lot and a lot of it's actually still out here in the garage. We need to get this tackled and then we will do our big garage sale and then I'll continue on with decluttering the rest of the house, but we kind of need to get this stuff sorted out. So you'll see a lot of familiar items that we have pulled out of our house from the last month or so but there's also a lot more in here. So it's going to be a bit of a project, but it will feel so good. Let's do this. I just wanted to start by moving all of our scooters and bikes and everything out to the driveway that we are going to be keeping. And then on the left side of the garage, I went ahead and moved all of our garage sale items because those are items that we've already decluttered from our house. So I don't need to do anything more with them, but I just need to scoot them out of the way. On one of the boxes, I think on the first episode of my decluttering series, I forgot to tape it like I just folded it up and Kyle was like that's gonna collapse for sure <laughs> and sure enough I went to like move it and it just totally started to collapse so we're gonna tape up a box get that moved out and then we can go ahead and get the jet skis pulled out and that'll give us a lot more room to get everything done in the garage So like I had mentioned, we have now decluttered several rooms in our house. My closet was one of the big ones. We also did our kitchen and then like all the front rooms in our house. So we did my office, Kyle's office, and also the guest room and entryway area. And I have got to say, it's been feeling so much better, like so much more peaceful in our house. We still have a long way to go and I'm honestly wanting to re-go through those rooms a little bit more thoroughly but we are starting out on this journey and it's feeling so good. And I feel like this was just kind of the next natural step. But anyway, once we got all of our garage sale filled boxes that we had just been storing in the garage for the past month or two, just kind of moved out of the way onto the driveway area. We then went ahead and pulled out our jet skis that we have. You might remember that we used to have a razor and that actually got stolen right out of our driveway on Christmas day last year. And so that was a huge bummer, but we ended up finding these jet skis on Facebook marketplace and we've absolutely loved using them all summer long. But anyway, we just kind of had to move those out of the way. That way we could get to all the other stuff and actually start working on decluttering things in the garage. It's coming back again. Oh, it's been a minute since all of my friends are coming over. Okay, so I have really good intentions, a lot. I've had this dresser for well over a year and I have had all the intentions to refinish it and everything and I keep keeping it. Like, I'm going to refinish it, I'm going to refinish it and I really think I'm going to soon. But because it's just been hanging out in a garage, I came up with this idea to put a post-it note or something on it with an expiration date. I love this idea. This is such a good <laughs> idea. Basically, once the expiration date happens, Kyle is free to go ahead and donate it or whatever. Then it's like, <laughs> I have had my time. And I think that'll help me also maybe get to it because then I know like I'm not in charge of it at that point. I have, I have something that's kind of holding me to getting it all done. So hopefully you guys will see that maybe on a video here on the channel or maybe over on the vlog channel i'll refinish it but anyway that's my plan so i'm gonna go grab a post-it note write an expiration date kyle will probably document that expiration date in his office or something because he definitely despises the stressor at this point but anyway that's my plan for furniture so that i make sure that i actually get to it all right i'm going to make my expiration date about three months away so i'm gonna write march 30th because i feel like then you know i'll have a handle on life right <laughs> so you guys have to keep me accountable because i really love this dresser and i want to make time to do it so it's official i'll put it right in the drawer so we don't lose it
This right here is another furniture piece that I just have to get to. I kind of started on it a little bit, or actually Luke helped me start on it a while back and we just haven't finished it. So there we go, a new expiration date for this one. But I also wanted to mention to you guys and remind you, I do have a giveaway going on for another week or two, I believe, for last month. I was a little late getting to this one, so I continued it into this month. But I am giving away $100 cash to one of my amazing subscribers. So all you have to do is, of course, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and then go ahead and leave a comment on all of the videos that I shared last month at this point. They are all up on the channel, so you can go ahead and comment on those if you haven't already. And as always, all the information for that will be shared in the description box below, as well as the pinned comment in this video. So, good luck! I wanted to show you guys this. So I got this, gosh, I don't know if it was for Kyle's birthday or Christmas, like one or two years ago, but it's so nice. It's a tool tote. It's sturdy, but it can be collapsed and it has a ton of pockets in here. But like when we go to work on things in our house, he will grab this, he'll grab his drill, screwdrivers, whatever tools or you know nails that he needs stick it in this and then he can bring it up to the room that we're working on and then bring it back here. We're not the best of putting it back away right away, but that's a really good one. And then also this is really cool. So this is a wristband, but it's magnetic. So if you are, you know, drilling something in or screwing something in, you can stick your screws or washers, whatever is magnetic to this. And then you don't have to be like fidgeting around for it. It's just all on your wrist. So anyway, just randomness, but I love those ones. This basket right here has literally been sitting in the garage for like almost a year. Actually, it was like a few days after Christmas last year. We traded in my Land Cruiser, which I miss so much, but we got a minivan. It just kind of works better for our family. Those DVDs came out of the minivan. So that is exactly how long this laundry basket has been sitting in my garage. Just a real life moment for you guys. We are making a lot of progress. It still feels messy in here and it kind of is, but we have certain little piles here and there and then we still kind of need to go through some of the things, but I'm actually gonna start going through all the cabinets, which is something that we don't always do when we go through a garage. And I really want the garage to actually stay functional. So I'm really trying to implement some of the things that I've learned from Dana K. White's book, which is what I've kind of talked about throughout my current decluttering series. Once we kind of have tackled the main area, I am going through here and I'm asking myself the questions that she shares that actually helps you declutter things and make it more sustainable. So I'm gonna start going through the cabinets, anything that we are not going to keep, anything that I can move around, shift around, organize that way, I will. And then while I'm doing that, I think Kyle's gonna kind of keep working on the floor area and anything that needs to get pulled out or donated or whatever, but we are making some good progress. But it came to an end Oh, we could be Hanging on a thread I ended up talking about this a lot during my kitchen declutter, but I talked about how it is very hard to not get focused on organizing when you're decluttering. For me at least, I really love an organized space, but you can't organize something efficiently if you're not decluttering first. If I am focusing on organizing, I will get so sidetracked and the amount of stuff that I can get decluttered and the amount of spaces that I can cover in one time period is going to be so much less if I'm putting all that effort 
effort into organizing. So that's what I mean by like, I will kind of reorganize a space while I'm putting things back that I'm keeping. So I'll kind of set it up a little nicer, but I'm not doing a full on organization where I might grab bins and, you know, label things. I am just doing it very, very lightly. Now, I also wanted to mention the questions that Dana K. White asks in her book. She says, when you're decluttering, first of all, take an item and go move it to its home immediately. You're going to do a lot of walking, but it's really going to make the decluttering process a lot easier. So if you find an item and it already has a home, take it to that home. You're good to go. If that item does not have a home or you can't think of it right away, then you're going to ask yourself the question of, if I was to look for this item, where would I look for it? If you can think of a space, then go ahead and take that item to its new home and that is where it belongs. However, if you cannot think of where this item belongs, like where its home would be, then you can go ahead and ask yourself the second decluttering question. If I were to need this item in the future, would I even realize that I had it? Now, there are a lot of odds and items that I might have that I'm like, oh, this could come in so handy one day and I would maybe never look for that item. And so what I'll do is I will actually actually go to the store and buy that item thinking there's no way I have this item. If that's the case, then you have now figured out that that item has no place and no home in your house and it's ready to be decluttered. And if that answer was yes, I would look for that item. Then now you know that you need to find a home for that item. So that is just like a very topical information. She goes into way more depth, obviously in her book, but those are some of the questions that I've been asking myself as I'm decluttering. And it has really kind of made this process go a lot easier. This right here is my paint cabinet. You guys know if you've been a part of my channel for a while, we love to do lots and lots of DIY makeovers here on the channel. We have done basically almost every single room in our house here in Arizona. We did a ton of rooms in our Utah house, including finishing our basement. And we've also done several series at friends and family's homes. So we have a ton of makeovers on the channel. If you're interested in those kind of videos, definitely check those out. But there is a lot of mess that comes with doing DIY makeovers and my paint cabinet is one of them. I have just never taken the time to organize this ever since moving in shamefully two years ago actually over two years ago and it was way behind time so i just took a few minutes decluttered anything that didn't belong in here anything that was maybe bad or you know just kind of trash and then i went ahead and kind of reorganized the cabinet again i'm not doing a full-on organization where it's like the most beautiful aesthetically pleasing organization but what i really mean is just kind of setting things in there in a more organized fashion and one thing i did end up doing because I just had too much paint from all the different projects that we've done is I actually ended up moving some of the paint items to a completely different cabinet just so that everything could fit a little bit more seamlessly. This little organization item right here is something that we added to our garage shortly after moving in. And other than it being very cluttered and you know having a lot of things that I didn't really use or need on there, this is such a game changer as far as organizing and storing your long handled cleaning tools. I would highly recommend ordering one or picking one up from your local Walmart or something. They come in all shapes and sizes. You can put them in your garage like we have. You can use them in your laundry room. They are just such a useful organization tool. All right, let me know in the comments what your guesses are for of why we have these little owls and why we are keeping them because we use them at least once a year, sometimes twice a year, and they are very, very helpful for us. So let me know your guesses down below. And once you make a guess, I'll let you know what they're actually for. I'm really curious if anyone's gonna know.
Kyle told me that he had already gone through this cabinet and I assured him it needed a little extra love. There really wasn't anything we were getting rid of in here, but it definitely could use a little bit of organization, right? I mean, we're not doing anything crazy here, but tell me the after did not take very long and it looks so much better. All right, we have all of the cabinets organized-ish. We're mostly just focusing on decluttering, but we have all these ones done, and then Kyle actually was working on these ones while I was working on the other ones, so we are just about done. We're gonna go ahead and clean out the garage, I guess, now, and then we'll start bringing some things back in, like the things that belong in here, and then also the garage sale items, just because we have nowhere to put them until we do our garage sale, hopefully later this weekend, so. Let's get to cleaning. Roller coaster on the run, we just begun, we just begun. Grab my hand, it's half the fun, cause here it comes, oh here it comes, we know. Oh, we'll make it. Stand by friend. This part is like the final piece. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel like that final segment is always where I lose my motivation. Like I struggle whether I'm cleaning a room or cleaning the house or organizing something. Well, I don't know. I think I don't struggle with organizing, but decluttering like that final stretch, it just feels like you're so close to the finish line that then you're like, oh, my mind kind of gives up a little bit and I just have to drag myself along. So that is what we're doing right here is just finishing up by cleaning in here. We definitely do need to actually like power wash the floors and really give them a very deep clean. But today we're just kind of blowing things off and sweeping things out and you can just see all of the mess going everywhere. So that was a little bit of a struggle, but it worked in the end and it was looking so much better. Now to talk about the garage sale a little bit, I've mentioned it here and there throughout my decluttering series. And basically there are some things that I'm decluttering cluttering and just donating and then some things I'm actually saving to do a garage sale with and the point of doing a garage sale is sometimes I feel like it's a little bit easier to do a garage sale if you feel like you can get back a little bit of what you spent on items even though I definitely don't feel like that's the whole point of decluttering I think the point is just to get that space back in your home and get peace so you are getting a lot for decluttering your items it might just not be monetary but I'm actually going to be having my three boys kind of run the garage sale and then they are going to earn money that they can go ahead and keep and that way it gives them an opportunity to earn some spending money. So that is just what all those boxes are full of but we did still end up removing a lot from the garage decluttering a ton and we were also able to fill up I believe three or four more garage sale boxes so we definitely decluttered a ton from this garage. all right do you guys remember this before oh my gosh it was just a nightmare every single time we walked out to the garage this only probably took us about three 
maybe four hours, but I think that also included a little lunch break. It did not take a whole lot of time, but we got so much done. We organized our garage sale pile. We donated a lot, like several laundry baskets full. We also removed any trash or recycling that we had just kind of strewn about our garage. We cleared out the cabinets that we were storing. A lot of things that we really didn't need or use anymore. We got a lot of little slight organization done in here and now I feel like every single time we open the garage door or we walk into the garage first I can actually find everything that I'm looking for and second it feels peaceful and calm and I could not be happier with this. I know these projects can feel so overwhelming to get started on but my biggest tip is just start. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you feel inspired and motivated to declutter an area in your own home. Don't forget to subscribe and enter that giveaway I have going on and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. I think it's time to take the horse. Me and all my friends go all out, all out. Get the red carpet and ball out. Let's get this Christmas party started and gather around the tree. Dressed in red and green. Mix the cocoa, pop some bubbly. Cause I can feel it in the air. It's Christmas. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are focusing on homemaking. I want to get things cleaned up and just give my home a little extra love, but I also have a ton of recipes. Well, not a ton. I think I have three recipes, but I do have a ton of food prep that I wanna get done in the kitchen. And I also wanna clean out my fridge because it's gotten away from me. So we have a lot to get done today. Let's get into it. So clearly you can see I had a lot of work ahead of me on this day, but I'm just kind of starting out taking things one step at a time. And because we had that random clean bedding in the middle of our kitchen, I wanted to get that kind of pushed out of the way first. So that was actually just from having a guest stay. My mom and sister came to stay with us over Thanksgiving break. And then they also stayed a little bit after that. So that was so, so much fun to have them. I absolutely love having family come stay with us and just getting to spend time with everybody. But once they were gone, we went ahead and just kind of cleaned everything up. And and that clean quilt was kind of the last bit of actually cleaning up after everybody had left. And also I wanted to share this room spray. It is just a DIY room spray that I made. I didn't end up adding anything to it other than just literally water and then some peppermint essential oil. You can add in whatever kind of essential oils you like, but this has been amazing and I've been using it all over our house everywhere all the time. It just smells so, so good. Once I got the bed made, I just moved back into the kitchen to kind of focus on <laughs> the obvious messy area in the house. Winter is crisper, the air is on fire. Sun burns your cheeks like the red with desire. I found you right when summer went away. Now I want December to stay. Oh. Tell me your favorite Christmas songs. I'll only agree if it is nothing cold. Chestnuts may be roasting by open fire. But I take a sweater beside you. We have yet <laughs> to decorate our Christmas tree. It's been crazy here because my mom and sister were just in town. They have now gone back home. So hopefully this weekend we'll be decorating the tree. But until then, it actually looks pretty fun because we have the colored lights that can also go just like white, but I'm loving it. It's time to dig the halls. Me and all my friends go all out, all out. Get the red carpet and ball out. Let's get this Christmas party started and gather around the tree. Dressed in red and green. Mix the cocoa, pop 
This is so incredibly random, but you can see I'm kind of pulling out these little bits of cardboard and this is actually a cat scratching box. I love it because as you can see, it kind of has more cat scratching bits in the bottom of it. And as your cats will scratch in it, you can just remove those pieces, flip them over. And I feel like you get five of those pieces in there. So you end up getting 10 uses out of it. One of the questions that I get so often is how we keep our cats from scratching on our furniture. And we are absolutely not perfect at that because I'm sure if you've been here for a while, you've seen some cat scratches on our furniture. However, this has been one of the things that helps the most is actually just keeping a nice scratching post or scratching area kind of next to the furniture. That way they have a good option when they feel the need to scratch. an ant farm for his birthday and he has been loving watching him like build a tunnel. My brother-in-law was here when we got him. The adults kind of helped Liam put it together and it was so funny because all the boys like including the two grown adults were sitting here just so interested in these ants and like what they were doing. It was so funny but I'm going to find a better spot for all of Liam's bug stuff other than our kitchen counter. <laughs> I feel like that last little statement just sums up being a boy mom. We are actually done having kids. We are not having any more, but we all the time just get asked if we're planning on having another kid or if we're going to be trying for a girl because we do have three boys. And honestly, I just feel like I would be so lost at this point having a girl. I am just so deep into the boy mom life that I just, I don't even know what I would do with myself. Cause I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you These are the good times with you Baby, this year is just gonna be you and me Hang by the fire and A few months ago, I had kind of struggled with this rug. I really love it in here. It gives you a little comfort on your feet when you're standing in the kitchen or cooking. And I also just think it looks really pretty. I was struggling with it shifting around the kitchen a lot. And so I had gotten this little pad, as you saw underneath the rug, and that was meant to keep this rug in place without actually like attaching it to the floor because I still am able to pull the rug up to mop underneath and all that stuff. And I feel like it worked pretty well for a while. And then as it got used and kind of messed with here and there and moved, it just started to not work as well. And so I found these little grippers and they have been working so much better. They had really really good reviews so if you have a rug especially a smaller rug just because that's what i'm testing them out on i would recommend them a lot they don't actually stick to the ground like you're not going to have any residue you can pull them up as needed but they really kind of create like a little section to the ground and so it's been keeping our rug perfectly in place ever since putting it down also this has nothing to do with my little rug grippers but i did want to mention i do have a giveaway going on i'm going to be giving away 100 dollars to one of you this is international so no matter where you live you can definitely enter all you have to do is make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and then leave a comment on these videos that i'm putting up on the screen right now and i will have all the information and details on this down in the description box as well as in my pinned comment but that giveaway is ending very soon so definitely make sure that you don't miss out on getting entered Baby, this year is 
just gonna be you and me This is so random, but this is my little tip for when you're wearing a ponytail. You just grab a little claw clip and you can clip it back behind towards the top end of your ponytail and it will give your ponytail height and volume, which is awesome, but it also keeps it in place so you're not having to constantly tug on your hair and tighten your ponytail. It just keeps everything in place. So that's my random tip of the day. But also I wanted to ask you guys if you have any ideas on like how to put up your hair. I feel like so many girls do such cute little hairstyles and I just end up doing either braids or a little ponytail or something simple. So if you have a certain way that you do your hair that you love, let me know in the comments or tag me on a post over on Instagram or something. I would just love to get some new hairstyle ideas and something preferably very simple and quick. What is your sink cleaning routine or do you have one? Do you clean it every day? Do you clean it multiple times a day? Do you never clean it or just tackle it once a week? And also what products do you use? For me, I will typically clean our sink like this at least once a day. I would say usually once a day. Usually I don't do more than that, but occasionally I will if I'm like on top of my game, I guess. And I do kind of change out the different products I use. Sometimes I'll use the pink stuff. Sometimes I use a Scrub Daddy Tangerine Cleaner or Bon Ami, but my go-to is just regular good old soap. Dawn dish spray is like my favorite. I just love that it suds it up and it's very simple to do. But when I'm thinking I want like a little bit more of a deeper clean, then that's when I'll bring in the other stuff. Is knocking outside our door. Let's let it all in. Children have been waiting. They can't wait for the festivities to begin. So I just wanted to shout out that my last video that I shared was actually a full kitchen makeover from start to finish. If you are somewhat new here, you might not realize that we actually have not had this kitchen in our house for super long. It was just a couple months ago that we finished our full on kitchen makeover. We did keep the cabinets and things like that, but we refreshed everything. We did a ton of DIYs. And now honestly, our kitchen just looks nothing like it used to. So I'm gonna link that video up here in the iCards as well as down in the description box. So you can go ahead and check that out if you haven't already. But it was really cool to just see the entire process from start to finish in one single video and just kind of watch it all transform. All right, it is a new day and I did not get as much done as I was hoping to yesterday. However, 
it's fine. We're starting with a clean slate today. I do want to go through the fridge and I don't think it'll take me too long because I'm going to be very intentional and just trying to kind of rush myself through it a little bit just to get that done because I feel like the fridge is a place where you can really spend a lot of time or you can knock it out pretty quickly. But for me at least, like I have to stay very focused. So that's what we're gonna do today. I do have a new grocery order in there that I just went ahead and put away. So we're going to have a lot of produce to prep out, which is perfect. It'll help with like healthy eating and all that stuff, especially during the busy holiday time. And then I also have some amazing recipes that I wanna share with you guys. And I'm also going to share what we're making for dinner tonight. It's baked potatoes, nothing crazy, but this is like the best, most delicious baked potato you will ever have. And you can make it super quick and easy. So we have a lot to get done. Let's do this. So like I had mentioned, my mom and sister were here and it was even during the holiday time, like during Thanksgiving. And so we had a lot of food in our fridge and a lot of the things that we had were actually from my mom and sister purchasing them. And some of the items were not things that our family will ever use. So I feel like the old me would have just kind of left them in there in case if someone came to visit again and wanted to use them or in case if maybe I decided I would use those products. And this time I just decided I'm going to remove everything that we're not actually going to use. And I won't necessarily throw everything out, but anything that I can give to my neighbors, I'll go ahead and do that. Anything that's expired, or if something's empty, I'll empty that out. And so I'll kind of go over everything in just a minute, but you'll see I ended up removing a lot from our fridge that was really never gonna get used. ago I actually changed up how we so stored everything in our fridge and how we organized it and it's been working really well I ended up actually storing everything in bins up here and I've really liked that like so we have all our condiments and everything in bins so I can just pull down a bin and get what I want however I just feel like we still have way too many condiments I think we only use specific ones so I'm just gonna go through and see what ones we can actually get rid of Over the past couple months, I have been working on decluttering our house. I've actually been sharing this in a series that I have going on called Declutter Your Home. And so far I have decluttered my office, our guest bedroom, our kitchen, our closet, and now most recently our garage. And I feel like it's actually given me a big mindset shift. I kind of chat about different things and all my feelings and all the things I've learned about it in those videos. But I've actually been noticing that I've been pulling aspects that I've learned from that and kind of my mindset shift in that into other areas of my life. For example, the condiments. It feels so good because we are getting rid of a ton of condiments and normally I would just keep them, but I'm going a little bit more minimal on condiments and things like that, just like I'm doing with the rest of the areas in our home. Look at the difference of how it looked before. All I did right here was just add in a couple of organizers that I already had in our home and it just looks so much better. And also I've noticed that we're starting to go through the fruit a little quicker 
ever since doing this just because it's more pleasing to the eye and you can also just see exactly what you have and what you're grabbing for. And this is so random, but I always get questions about that little blue apple looking thing whenever I share it in my videos, but basically that just goes into your produce drawer and it's able to help prolong the life of your produce. But another thing I did when I cleaned out our fridge was to actually move our veggie drawer back up to the top part of the fridge. I thought I had a great idea in like moving it down to the bottom area. However, it was kind of out of sight, out of mind. And I feel like I've just noticed a lot more of our veggies have been going bad because we're not grabbing for them. This right here is everything that I'm decluttering from our fridge, which I know sounds a little bit different to say you're decluttering your fridge, but I feel like whenever I clean out my fridge, I never think of it as a declutter. I just think of, you know, I'm taking out anything expired and I'm cleaning it up. But this time I did think of it as a declutter and it felt amazing. And I also feel like this has actually helped me want to buy less at a time. And I feel like that's just going to make our fridge feel a lot more simple and easier to find things. And I also think it's gonna help us waste less. All right, now that we have our fridge all cleared out, we are gonna go ahead and make some taco soup. Taco soup, enchilada soup, whatever you wanna call it. You could make this for a dinner. I'm actually just gonna make it to have in the fridge so we can have it for lunches, for after school snacks, whatever. It's just so nice to have in the fridge. I actually have some leftover turkey because I got an extra turkey after Thanksgiving. They were for like 49 cents a pound. So I went ahead and took advantage of that. If you don't have, you know, extra turkey like that, you can go ahead and use chicken. You can make this just a vegetarian soup. You can even like bulk up on the beans, add some chickpeas, whatever you want. You can kind of go wild with the soup, but it comes together in like a matter of 30 minutes. Okay, so in this recipe, you are basically going to have like three sections of your ingredients. So first you're gonna grab a large stock pot Go ahead and heat it on like medium high heat and you're going to either use butter or some kind of oil just to saute your veggies. You wanna chop up your pepper, carrots, celery, onion, saute that for a few, add in the garlic, saute that for a few minutes until everything's nice and soft. Then you're going to move into your second set of ingredients and you're going to add in all of your seasonings, along with your broth. I'm just using the better than boyan, but you can use homemade broth, you can use like jarred stock, whatever you have. Also, you're gonna add in your tomato paste and the fire roasted diced tomatoes. This is gonna give a lot of really good deep flavor. 
you're going to then cook that for like 10 or 15 minutes. You want the flavors to just kind of meld together and soften all of your veggies. Then you're gonna go ahead and use an immersion blender or dump your soup into a regular blender. If you don't have an immersion blender, just be careful because it will be hot and you're going to just pulsify it. You're just going to want to make it really nice and smooth. That's what's going to make your soup taste really nice and creamy without a bunch of dairy or anything. And then once that is done, you're gonna add it back into your pot. Then you're going to add in all of your chopped chicken or turkey or add in all your extra beans. You're also going to add in like the kidney beans and black beans as well as the corn. So you have a lot of good texture in it, but you still have like that creamy base in your soup. It is so, so incredibly yummy. we're going to do is make some cranberry orange baked oatmeal bites these are so so yummy they come out like kind of cakey but they're just perfect for like on-the-go breakfast they're a great afternoon snack or if you have like a little sweet tooth but they are made with really good ingredients and I just feel like cranberry and orange I don't know about you guys but I feel like it's the perfect holiday treat like those are some of the most amazing holiday flavors to me anyway let's do this I literally just pulled everything out for this recipe and realized the oats that I have, they are like basically steel cut oats and I just don't know how this recipe is gonna turn out with steel cut oats. So I'm gonna have Kyle pick up some rolled oats when he is on his way back home. And we'll make this recipe a little bit later this afternoon. And then we'll actually go ahead and start prepping out all of our produce and stuff and then we'll make this recipe and dinner later on. So, real life moment, that's just what happens. So, change of plans. Now we're going to instead go ahead and start prepping out produce. And I'm just starting out by kind of rinsing all of our produce and getting that all clean. By the way, I love this produce drainer. It's awesome because you're able to actually clean your produce and then in the same container, you can strain it and rinse it out. So it just saves a little bit on dishes and it also makes storing it really nice and compact just because the strainer actually nestles into the bottom dish. Now that produce cleaner that I used actually does not work any better or worse than baking soda or vinegar, but don't feel like you need to go pick it up if you have baking soda and vinegar on hand because honestly those just work just as well now when i prep my produce out it gets eaten so quickly like all of these berries barely lasted us a day and a half whereas if i had not prepped them out they would have just sat in the fridge for several days i'm sure and maybe some of them could have gone bad so for us it is even like a money saving move to go ahead and prep out our produce but i would definitely recommend only prepping out what your family will actually eat A 
while back, I actually started using my salad spinner to dry our produce off whenever I prep it out. And I also started laying them out to dry on these white cloths that I have. And I've just noticed that when I allow the produce to dry a little bit more, like I put a little bit more emphasis on drying everything out, it just helps our produce last so much longer. So if you're prepping and you have the time to do that, I would definitely suggest giving your produce a little bit of extra time and putting a little more effort in allowing them to dry more thoroughly because it really will make a big difference. And another quick little tip for kind of extending the life of your prepped produce is actually just to place a little piece of paper towel inside of your produce containers and that will also help to absorb any excess liquid and again just continue to prolong the life of your produce. Next up, I am just chopping up all of these veggies and this is going to be going into my own little DIY veggie trays. I love a good veggie tray from a store, but they are so expensive and I feel like you honestly don't get a ton. So I've been making these little veggie trays for at least a year, if not more. And our family loves them because the little compartments inside can actually pop out if you just want one thing or you can take the whole thing with you and then stick it back in the fridge when you're done. It's just awesome. One little tip that I have for pineapple is, you know, like that tough center piece. A lot of times I feel like people just throw it out because it's kind of too tough to eat and enjoy as normal. But what we love doing is actually sticking it in a freezer bag, just popping in our freezer. And then whenever we're ready to make a smoothie or anything, you just stick it in your smoothie and it will completely pulverize it and it tastes so good. And then it just feels like you're doing a lot better with not as much pineapple waste. Hold up, I am on my way, I'm in motion, let's go to the ocean, yeah let's and then this was kind of a random thing I decided to do on this day. Typically, I will cut up my lettuce and then stick it in my salad spinner and wash it off and rinse it and dry it and all the stuff. But today I decided to do it like my mom does. Maybe it's actually because she doesn't have a salad spinner, but whatever. I decided to go ahead and just pull off the leaves and actually wash the leaves on their own and then go ahead and just chop them up. And then I kind of dried them in my salad spinner and I actually really loved it. I feel like it maybe went a little bit quicker and I definitely felt like the lettuce was cleaned a lot more thoroughly because I was able to get my hands on every single piece and just wash them individually. Santa's coming to visit No, he wouldn't miss this In Christmas times Oh, oh and the sun said It is just getting better On a blanket with the skyline Painted in blue Ooh, yeah, that's what we do We'll be chilling and having a good, good time Walmart saves the day again. <laughs> I ended up doing a Walmart delivery order and I now have my rolled oats and a few other things that we needed, not necessarily food items, but it was just from Walmart. So I grabbed that. Now we can go ahead and make those delicious cranberry orange baked oatmeal, yum.
I just realized I totally forgot to show cranberries in the ingredient section. So you also need cranberries for this orange cranberry baked oatmeal. I am going to use coconut oil, but you can also use a different kind of oil. But if you are using coconut oil, just make sure to melt it first. So that's what I'm gonna do really quick. I'm just gonna melt a couple tablespoons of oil, like coconut oil, in the microwave. Okay, so as always, I do have the recipe cards for all the recipes popped up here on the screen. And then I also have them over on my website, which is just thiscrazylifevlog.com. So you can go ahead and check out there and see all the recipes that I've shared over the years. I don't think all of them are on there, but a majority of them are. But anyway, what you're gonna do for this is start by preheating your oven to 375 degrees. And then you're also gonna grease just a nine by nine baking dish or a similar size. Then you're going to add in all of your wet ingredients so you're going to add in your eggs and melted oil, maple syrup, fresh orange juice, milk, and vanilla extract. Add that all to a mixing bowl and make sure to whisk it together really nicely. Then next you're going to add in your rolled oats, orange zest, baking powder, cinnamon, and salt and stir that well until everything is nicely combined. And then last you're going to fold in your cranberries. Then finally you're just going to transfer that batter into your prepared baking dish and you're going to bake that for about 35 to 40 minutes or just once the edges are golden and the middle is set. Now for this, you can actually go ahead and serve it immediately or do what we like to do, which is wait about 20 minutes to kind of let it finish setting up. And then you just cut and you can serve it into squares. And I'll show you in a little bit how we make a glaze that you can go on top of it if you'd like. Okay. We are going to make the easiest dinner. You can bulk up potatoes to be an amazing dinner. It's very low budget and super easy, especially if you make it this way. So I have some jumbo <laughs> baking potatoes. I actually learned this, I think it was from my sister-in-law several years ago. We went over to my brother and sister-in-law's house and she made baked potatoes and they were just the most incredible thing ever. They were so delicious and I was like, what? in the world did you do to these? I have to know. And it was so easy, I couldn't believe it. So all we are going to do is wash our potatoes, then you're going to want to pierce your potatoes a few times with a fork, as you normally do. Then you are actually going to rub oil on your potato and that really crisps up the skin and you're also going to season it with salt all over the skin. Ugh, I cannot even explain to you guys how delicious this is. And then we're just going to cook them in the air fryer on 400 degrees for 30 minutes, but again, you can definitely do this in the oven as well. These tiny white lights, they burn bright, and they're all around the house. And I'm building a fire tonight, cause there's snow out on the ground. Couldn't find a decent tree in the California drought But I flew a thousand miles and got one now It's good to be home this Christmas It's good to be home, it's true There could be no better place for me Oh my gosh, you guys, how good does that look? So this is what we had for dinner and it was so simple and I just ended up serving it with some salad, but you can top this potato with a lot of different things. You can top it with taco meat or beans, cheese, like whatever you want, or you can kind of keep it simple like we did, but you can really bulk this up and just make it as you know unique and filling as you would like. I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. If you are still here, go ahead and comment your favorite emoji down below and stay tuned for next week's video because I am going to be sharing a super high energy cleaning motivation and like productive vlog. I'm really excited for it. So definitely stay tuned for that one. Make sure you're subscribed if you are not already and I will see you next time. Bye guys.
Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be a little bit all over the place. There's just a lot that I wanna get done. I wanna get some cleaning done. I also need to do things like restuffing our couch upstairs. I want to make some really fun DIY Christmas gifts. I literally have a list on my phone of all the things that I'm kind of hoping to get done today, but I figured I would just take you along with me. We can get things done together. We're going to keep energy high and just get all the things done because there's a lot to do before the holidays. So let's go ahead and get on into things. I wanna hear you say yeah. Say something meaningful, say something I don't know, I want to know you better. All right, we are kicking things off in my office today and kind of towards the front of the house in our guest bedroom as well. I feel like I tend to kind of get into habits and typically I will start in my kitchen or in my bedroom, kind of depending on my mood, I guess. But when I want to feel extra motivated i feel like i will go for my office because that is the space that i spend a lot of time in during the week and i don't know what it is but it's a lot of time a mess so having my office really nice and organized and cleaned up in here makes a huge difference so that's what we're tackling first <laughs> i've been doing our decluttering series throughout the house well these books some are my good book cookbooks and then some i was like debating on if i was keeping or not and then when my mom and sister came into town we ended up pulling them all out and like looking through them. And so now I just have to re go through them very quickly and put any that we're not gonna keep in my donate pile. I'll sing until my lungs give out your beautiful. So the reason I wanted to share a high energy clean with me is because of course I had all of these things that I wanted to get done that I needed to kind of focus on around the house. So I wanted to share kind of a productive vlog of getting everything done, hanging out with you guys, doing it all together. But I really wanted to make sure that the focus of this video felt very high energy, very motivating because personally I have been kind of up and down a lot lately. I actually have been talking to one of my friends and I feel like my hormones have been very out of whack lately. It's just incredible to see like what a difference it makes when your hormones are imbalanced and just kind of everything I've been looking up lately. I feel like that's definitely kind of what's been going on with me so i was personally really just needing to focus on getting everything done and keeping my energy up and for me keeping my energy up doesn't always mean actually having good energy it kind of is more like a mind game so that's what i wanted to focus on today and honestly it really actually worked like i was struggling when i first started like i didn't want to get anything done but i had a laundry list of things to do and once i started working and just taking one step at a time and starting to check things off my list it really is amazing like how motivating that can be and how much momentum you gain just from taking that first step so if you're struggling today or you know this week i hope that you can take that little tip and kind of run with it because it really will make a big difference and it'll actually boost your mood a lot. But on a side note, if you have ever struggled with like a hormone imbalance, let me know any tips you have. I'm definitely going to be working on getting my blood work checked and stuff in the new year and hopefully I can get some answers and kind of get things sorted out. But if you have any suggestions or things that have worked for you, definitely let me know in the comments. Definitely one of the chores that I neglect way too often is our windows. I don't know what it is, but I've just, I feel like I used to stay on top of windows a lot better than I do now, but this one in particular is so bad. We're also gonna do my office front window because that's kind of the same situation. Nothing out there could ever stop me From chasing after the way you la 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 Keeping me up two cups of coffee 
I'm gonna try and see if I can do that same technique but with just my e-cloths because I do feel like they get the window perfectly spotless. So we'll see. I'm in love. Don't care who knows about it. Can't get enough. No, I can't do without you. Spend it all my time thinking about you. I think I got a rush on ya. Yes, I got a rush on ya. Say goodbye to my lonely days. I'm so high. I'll do whatever it takes yeah, to keep you by my side. No, I can't deny. Think I got a rush on ya. Yes, I got a rush on ya. Glimmer in your eyes gets me every time. It shines so bright, it leaves me blind. I could lose myself inside your mind. But I don't really mind it. Now I'm just transitioning from those nicely cleaned front rooms to our wood wall, which is always our catch all area, or at least one of them. I don't know what to do about this space. I've asked you guys for tips. I've asked you guys for suggestions of things that have helped you with your catch-all areas. And I don't know, it's like it stays clean for a couple of days. And then until I do a full-on clean like this again, it comes back. And it's such a bummer because this ledge is just so pretty when it's clean. It's very welcoming and inviting right by the front door since we don't have an actual like foyer and table and all that stuff. But it looks so terrible when you walk by it and it's so cluttered all the time. So, I don't know. Maybe in the new year I'll figure it out, but for today, we're just cleaning it off. All right, we are making some good progress. The front of the house is nice and clean. We finally decorated our Christmas tree. It's so funny because we decorated for Christmas a little earlier than normal this year because my mom and sister were coming into town and then we decorated our tree later than normal. So there was like such a long time where our tree was just kind of bare. It did have the lights, but we finally decorated it. It is not, you know, like Pinterest styled. We have just like all of our special ornaments each year and the kids, do most of the decorating on our trees. That's kind of how it was growing up. We always like to do the same thing. So there's definitely a lot of clumps of jingle bells and ornaments and all the things. The top is a lot more bare, but it's beautiful and I love it. So anyway, we have the doors open to outside because it's just not that cold right now. So we're enjoying the nice fresh air coming into the house. Whoops, I'm literally tripping over stuff like Nerf guns and all the things. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the kitchen and living room area. It's just very cluttered right now with a lot of stuff that needs to get tidied up. But then I do have actually a lot of stuff over here in this area. And I'm gonna kind of leave that over here because those are the DIY gifts that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. And that's part of it too. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's, let's keep going. When we were seven on in the cold side Riding the streets, put us on our feet The years always move so fast Our dreams are all blown up But we still own this town They try and box us in We'll fight our way out If we're going down, if we're going down We're going down together we're going down together All right, we are not quite into the new year, but let's go ahead and talk new year goals 
This is the time of year where I start to get very excited for the new year and I start to kind of make my goals. I actually don't go all the way into making like a, not a mood board, but like a vision board, I guess, for the new year. Let me know in the comments, do you ever make vision boards? And if you do, do you make them like in real life, like a physical board that you can see? Or do you make them on your computer or on your phone or something? And if so, do you think they help? Cause I don't know, I think it's kind of a fun idea. I just haven't ever gone to that degree of kind of making my plans. But anyway, I'm kind of getting sidetracked a little bit. So for me, some of my goals that I have for 2024 is of course, I'm always trying to find new ways to manage my Hashimoto's and thyroid a little bit better. So that is something that I want to put a bit more emphasis on this coming year, especially with my hormones acting up lately. I really <laughs> kind of feel the need to really focus on that. I also want to continue my decluttering journey. As you may know, we have decluttered a lot of the areas in our home already, and we have gotten rid of so many things. So it feels really, really good. But I'm going to continue decluttering more of our house and just focusing on making our home feel more calm and peaceful. I feel like I'm always needing to work on my work life and home life balance. I think that's kind of an ongoing thing and I think a lot of people are dealing with that. So that's definitely going to be higher on my list this coming year. And then another thing that I wanna work on is actually solidifying my routines. Several years ago, I feel like I had all kinds of routines and I feel like I was very diligent in doing all of them. And just with my personality, it just gave me so much peace and everything kind of ran a lot smoother. So in the coming year, I really want to solidify different cleaning routines, like a weekly cleaning routine, daily cleaning routine, all that kind of stuff. Also, I want to work on a self-care routine. I just feel like that would really benefit my life so much. So those are just a few of my 2024 goals. I'm sure we'll be talking about those a little bit more in depth in the actual new year, but if you have some goals, I would love to hear what yours are. And also one of the things that I think is so cool is to think of one word that you want to kind of focus on this year, like kind of be your word of the year. Now I have not come up with my word for 2024, but if you already have your word, let me know in the comments and let me know what that word specifically means to you. But over the next week or two, I will be thinking about my word and deciding what it is. And I'll plan to share that with you guys in my very first video for the new year. I really just have so much excitement and positivity going into the new year. I feel like it's gonna be a really, really good year. All right, so while I'm showing you my disgusting dirty stove and also that little crevice underneath it, which by the way, I couldn't really figure out a great way to clean this. So I kind of used a kebab skewer and just a cloth and a little scraper. So I'll have to figure out a better way to clean that in the coming year. But I wanted to share some of my video ideas that I have for the new year, just to kind of kick the year off in a really exciting, positive, motivating way. So anyway, here, are some of my video ideas and let me know if there's anything that you are really really excited to see or anything that I didn't mention that you would love to see like a certain type of video and I will definitely do my best to add it to the rotation but I definitely want to share some of course motivating cleaning and everything I also want to get back into some house projects I think during the holiday time it's just kind of too busy to do a ton of house projects and makeovers and stuff but I do have 
have some house projects that I want to get done. I also want to get started on our bedroom makeover as well as our laundry room makeover. So those will be starting to kind of take priority as well. And then I'm also wanting to work on decluttering again, kind of like I just mentioned. So stay tuned for some decluttering videos because I'll be continuing on with my decluttering series. I think we're on episode five next, so that will be happening for sure. I also shared a few months back trying out some new cleaning tools. So I think I'll probably do the same thing in the new year with some new cleaning tools, cleaning products, things like that. But also I wanna share like a roundup of all of my favorite cleaning tools and cleaning products, just kind of the ones that I think are really worth it. That way I can be trying things out and you don't have to waste your money on things that aren't really worth it. And then I think the last thing on my list was actually to share some more homemaking videos that will have a ton of healthy recipes for the new year. So those are kind of my thoughts, but anything that you would like to see, definitely leave your thoughts and suggestions down below. ordered a new corded vacuum just because mine has been kind of showing its age a little bit I've had it for several years I used it so so much like all over we've used it in multiple houses like I love that vacuum but I wanted to try this one because I see this one go on sale sometimes but I saw it go on like an insane deal I think at the moment it might still be 184 when I got it last week it was 199 but it's normally a $400 vacuum so it was literally half off this is a shark vertex I love my shark vacuums and I'm really excited to have like a full size because the one that I've had is technically an uplight like it's a light corded vacuum and I just think that the full size ones can offer even more suction. So I'm really excited to try this and we are gonna test this vacuum out. Just a very quick update on this vacuum. I have been loving it so much so far. I've only been using it about a week or so now but every time I use it, I'm just very impressed with how much suction it has. Now it is definitely a bulkier vacuum. It's like a full size corded vacuum, but with that you get great suction, which I feel like you just can't really get that with a cordless vacuum. Also, I do love that you can detach the base from the head of the vacuum. That way you can very easily get underneath furniture. And of course with a full size vacuum, you're going to have a larger dust bin. So that means you have to empty it less often, which is really nice. It also has has a no hair wrap head just like most of the shark vacuums do now and another thing that i love is that it is self-propelled so it's not like really hard or heavy to push so there are a lot of things that i'm loving about this vacuum and i'll continue to share that as i use it more and more I'm gonna go ahead and fold these towels. These are my bloom towels. If you've been here, you know I love them. They're like a tight-knit waffle weave. They are very, very durable and they last for years. Like I've had a lot of these for years and years and they're really good size. They're double-sided. They have a ton of cute prints. They also are like crazy absorbent and just like the perfect kitchen towel. But anyway, you'll have to adjust this fold depending on the size of your towel. But basically what you're gonna do is pick whatever side you want out. You're gonna lay that on the opposite side. So you're gonna lay the inside of it up. Now you're gonna tuck a little pocket on the bottom and then you're going to fold it into thirds. Then you're just going to roll it down. This size of towel, I just do five folds down, but you'll just kind of have to play around with it. And then you fold it over right on top of that fold. And then you're literally just gonna tuck it right inside of itself and create its own little envelope. I've heard that some people will say that this might, you know, be a little bit of a waste of time, but honestly, like once you get good at it, it does not take much time at all to do. And then it's nice because you can actually pick exactly which towel you want to use. It also saves a ton of space, so I love it. Yeah. 
is a change. It might take me. Okay, so here is a little breakdown of the gift ideas that I had. So we are giving these to the teachers and also the ladies in the front office, but this does not have to be like a school gift. This kind of could go for anybody. The first thing that we got, these ones are going to go for the front office ladies. So it's just this little aloe vera plant. It comes in a little nursery pot. And then separately, I got these little terracotta pots. You can get these, I think sometimes actually at the Dollar Tree maybe, but they just were at Walmart for a dollar. So how cute is that? I feel like the terracotta pots are also like very in right now, but even so they're just simple and classic. But this is awesome because they can take this aloe vera plant home and just, they can break it off and use it. They can use it for decor. Aloe vera is so incredibly easy to take care of. To go with that is this little mini Martinelli sparkling cider bottle. These are just actually from Dollar Tree. So I got six of them. I just thought this was so cute because it's kind of like special, but it's also useful. Like they'll be able to just enjoy it. And then I also got some holiday chocolates. This will be a little gift. Isn't that so cute? And it costs just like a few bucks each. All right, these are so fun. So the boys actually made these last night, but these are something that I've made with our boys years and years ago. Basically you can just get a Dollar Tree mug or kind of any mug that you want and you literally just draw on it with a Sharpie marker. You can use colored Sharpies like we used here. And if you mess up, you can always erase it with magic eraser. That works really, really well. But once you get it all set how you want, you're going to pop it into an oven and then turn it on to 350 degrees and then bake it for 30 minutes. So you do wanna put it in a cold oven and then heat it up and then let it completely cool before taking them out. That way you're just not risking cracking them or anything. But these are so fun because they're personalized. They cost literally $1. We're also going to put in some hot cocoa packets inside of the mugs. And I got them each their own little bag of two chocolates. I also have these bloom towels. These ones are actually for teachers. I think they were just part of like their back to school collection. I thought these would be perfect for teacher gifts. This one says, thanks for helping me bloom. And then on the other side, like green polka dot stripes. And then this one is green and blue on the back. And then it has this cute saying on the front. And that is going to be the gifts for the actual teachers. So let's go ahead and get these kind of made up. This is where I start to overthink things. Like it doesn't even matter where this goes, but I'm like, should I put it on this way so it's not like covering up the cute design or should I tape it on the back? Or like, is this the back or is this the front? Should I do it like this? And then they flip it over to see their name. <sighs> All the little options I have to choose from. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do it right here cause that's kind of cute, right? Yeah, that's cute. Then they can flip it over to see their name. Just on the counter. Next, we're going to make the teacher gifts, but before we get going on that, I'm actually gonna start dinner and it's gonna be super easy. So I figured I would just share it with you guys. So you can get these, you can order them online. I think it like on Amazon or Walmart, but I just went to Aldi maybe a week ago and I saw them there for like the lowest price I've seen. I think it's like $2 each. It's this Kevin's brand. You basically just add the sauce into whatever meat you want. So like they have beef ones, they have chicken ones, and then they have different flavors 
flavors like this one's Korean barbecue sauce, Thai coconut sauce, which I think is what we're gonna do tonight. But literally I'm just gonna chop up a couple chicken breast, saute it in the pan. Towards the end, I'll add this with like a little bit of green peas. And then I'm also gonna make some rice for the side and then just some edamames to have on the side of it. And that'll be dinner. It'll be very, very simple, but this stuff is so, so nice, especially for like really quick dinners. Literally for this, I just folded up the bloom towels and then stuck on an extra peppermint chocolate right on front, wrapped it up with a pretty ribbon, and then I stuck a hot cocoa packet and the chocolate inside the DIY mug that we made the night before. And it was just such a fun gift. It was very budget friendly. I feel like it's super useful. And also it just came together really easily. So for our dinner, once the chicken was like mostly cooked, I just took it out of the pan and sliced it up a little bit. This is just kind of how I like to cook my chicken. And then once the chicken was mostly fully cooked, that's when I added in the frozen peas along with a sauce packet. And you literally just saute that for a few minutes and the chicken is done. Of course, I made the rice a little bit earlier and then I just popped in some edamame into the microwave to heat those up. And this is like one of our favorite last minute dinner ideas. If you have any really good dinner ideas like this that are very quick that you don't honestly really even need much of a recipe for, I'm all ears. I would love to hear any suggestions and ideas that you have. And then once dinner was done, I just went ahead and sprayed my DIY room spray around before calling it a day. Honestly, I cannot wait for the days to start getting longer and longer. I feel like they've gotten so short and it's just getting dark so super early. So I'm very much looking forward to the longer days coming back. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And I also wanted to mention if you are not following me over on TikTok and Instagram, I'm sharing a lot more reels and stuff over there as well. So definitely go follow me over there if you're not already. And I am so excited for the upcoming year and all the fun videos that I have planned for you guys. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all of those fun videos and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.